Ready to start understanding how to hit the rotational shot put and transition to big throws? We're gonna talk about it in this video, so check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, we are gonna talk about rotational shot put 101. We're gonna compare first day thrower to a first week thrower to a multi-year uh, 17 year old and a multi-year 18 year old. And you're gonna see kind of the evolution and you're gonna see that they're all working on the same thing. So one of the things if you're new to the channel or if you're new to our IGTV is that the way we look at the throw here is what we call as a throwing chain reaction system. We break the throw down into six pillars. The reason being is that the throw happens very quickly brand new thrower on day one you're gonna notice is gonna be right around two seconds in an advanced under 18 thrower is gonna be throwing about one and a half seconds and he's throwing around 70 feet and the first thrower is throwing around 25 feet now one of the things that we want to do is we're gonna be looking at the throw in terms of because it happened so fast was what we call our six pillars we're gonna look at basically the start and we're gonna look at what each pillar does right each pillar basically is a location in the ring we have a an objective, what are we trying to do at that point of the throw? And then we have positions to be able to achieve the, the objective. The first thrower up, we're gonna look at a young thrower. This was his first day. We're gonna look at thrower number one, and we'll just quickly refer to these as one, two, three, and four. Kind of just let everything roll. You're gonna notice again, the speed of the throw. Again, the young thrower is the first day, so he doesn't night quite know how to reverse, but you're gonna notice the movement is pretty good. So this is the benefit of taking the system, how we break down the throw and how we teach it to a young athlete. So now you're gonna see it, we go through our pillar one, pillar two, and now we're looking at how we kind of move our pillar three, pillar four, pillar five, and pillar six. So let's look at how that throw looks when we break it down. So one of the first things that we want to do is we have to understand that setting up the throw is really critical and that's what we refer to as our pillar one position. As we've talked about with like the discus with the rotational shot, we still have to create separation and stretch reflex and one of the key things is that we're setting up this entry axis right and so how we're going to be able to move around that this thrower number two is only had just made the switch and been throwing for roughly about a week with the rotational shot now you're going to notice that as we move the athletes to what we refer to as our pillar two you're going to notice that we're going to be talking about how we move around the axis this is going to be the key how we are going to be able to get the body around here so the position of this hip and this shoulder right as we look so if i look at thrower number four we'll look at his entry side hip under the entry shoulder Shoulder, we're going to notice these are the key things. You're going to notice this is one of the things that the new thrower had learned very well. You're going to see that thrower number one on his first day, right, he's got all the key concepts. So what we refer to on the first pillar is setting up the chain reaction. We're going to set up everything so the body reacts to be able to move into these positions a whole lot easier. Learning how to move the feet, the arms, coordinating the lower body and the upper body, these are the things that are very tricky for the athlete. Here you're going to notice that thrower number one in some ways almost has a better entry hip than thrower number three who's throwing multiple years so this is where as the athletes are going to be getting older thrower number two is the same thing but it was again his first week throwing with the rotational shot but hitting a very nice position and looking at where that hip is underneath that shoulder so these are all some very good things as we do this alignment the point of this is that alignment is going to help you as a thrower move through so what we want to do is make sure that you understand as you go from pillar one to pillar two setting up maximum power is the goal right so we want to set that ability to create all that speed and balance and that's what the, the object of our pillar Pillar two. So pillar three is where we basically talk about how we're going to drop into the throw and apply speed. So we're going to drop in, we're going into the center of the throw towards the direction, the throwing direction, and we're going to be trying to increase as much speed and power as possible. Point here is we're going to be looking at counterbalancing. We have the sweep, we have the, the counterbalance arm. This is going to be real important to the rotational path into the center as you apply speed. And you're going to notice this thrower here is, has a really nice counterbalance system as does thrower number three and number four. And so you're gonna notice that our week one and our week two, they, these are gonna be things that they're gonna be continuing to develop. So as we create speed into the middle, we kind of work on our pillar four. We're gonna do, this is where we call, we're transitioning from the sprint leg to the delivery leg. This is where the upper body is going to kind of pause, lower body is wrap, and this is what we refer to as bringing it all together so that you're increasing that rotational speed. You're gonna notice where they all land. So number Number three kind of goes a little too far and he's landing at three o'clock where we want to have that foot landing closer back to one o'clock obviously if you look at number 
one we'd be talking up here. Here's your 12 o'clock. Thrower number two, again, really nice job hitting his rewrap, getting everything here, pulling the left foot uh, into the power position. So we're gonna set that up. So now we go into here. This is what we're, we refer to as our traditional power position, and we call this locking down power. We wanna have both legs loaded up so that we can create that nice rotational speed into our delivery. And we're gonna see that delivery side going this way out and around into our throw. You're gonna see that nice long balance arm that's gonna take the long path of the upper body to allow the thrower to come into the throw. And now you're gonna set up that nice big squared up position. So you're gonna notice that thrower number four has a real nice line. You're gonna see everything's pretty straight through the back and up through the head. You're gonna notice that thrower number three is kind of pulling off. And so that's gonna be some strength number, thrower number one, again, day one, heck of a great job, really great position. And you can see he's pulling off a little bit. That's gonna drop that elbow a touch. Number two, just a smidge um, off, but a pretty nice delivery position and a nice elbow and a nice strike. Our next three-part series coming up, we're gonna go through each thing, go through a little bit more detail, but the key thing is how do you get thrower number one, this good quality of movement in just the first day? You can imagine where this athlete's gonna be in multiple years. So the idea was, we, again, we broke down the throw into six pillars. It's a system that everybody can understand. So whether you're a beginning thrower or whether you're you know, number one or number four, you know, the top thrower in the US his particular year and one of the best throwers in high school history is we're working on generally the same things, but as the concepts and the positions become more learned, the details become more critical. But the first things first is when you're approaching your throwing, the why that we created the system and why we're putting out this video is to help you understand that if you don't have a structure to follow and you're not clear on the objectives that you're supposed to be achieving throughout the throw from start to finish, you're going to have a much harder time understanding the throw. You can potentially develop a lot of unnecessary habits that are going to hold you back and limit your progress. Okay, guys, so that's it. Stay tuned for the next video. Be sure to like and follow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, comment below. Remember, next video is coming up, how to throw the rotational shot put from zero to 70 feet. All right, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.